Eric, you are selfish. What? Why are you saying that? I can no longer pretend that everything is fine. Change is necessary, and it's time for you to make the right decision. What? Don't you feel ashamed? What about you? How can you be so selfish? Don't you feel any pity for us? What the hell are you talking about? You're aware of the issue I've been harboring for the past three years. I can't keep silent any longer. It seems entirely unfair that my husband, Troy, only receives half of your father's assets. Splitting everything equally just doesn't seem justifiable. How is it unfair? You said it yourself. Everything was shared equally. Why should Troy get more? Because he has kids to raise. Duh. We have three kids together. Remember? Do you know how expensive it is to raise kids today? You weren't married and childless, so you are probably clueless. I know it's very expensive to take care of kids. I also know that my dad set up a trust for your kids before he died. He told me all about it. You and Troy literally spent weeks in his house pressuring him to set up the trust. He did it out of love, but he didn't like the fact that you were so demanding. If he did it out of love, he would not have told you. But that doesn't matter. We want the house. What house? The house is in the suburbs. It's a big house, and a single man like you doesn't need it. You mean the family mansion? Yes. I need you to transfer the ownership of that house to us. We need it. Your dad should have given it to my husband rather than you. He made a mistake, so it's time for you to correct it. What? It wasn't a mistake. The family house goes to the eldest son. That's our family's tradition. Besides, Troy got an apartment in the city and a winter house in the countryside. He also inherited way more cash and shares than I did. This was done to balance out the fact that I was getting the manor. The apartment and the winter house are nothing compared to the manor. They are inadequate for raising our wonderful children. Although we are currently residing in the apartment, it feels incredibly cramped with only six bedrooms, whereas the manor boasts twelve rooms. Additionally, the manor is situated in a much safer neighborhood, which is far more conducive to raising children. I've sold the winter house, and we're in the process of vacating the apartment. Once we've settled into the manor, I'll proceed with the sale of the apartment. You aren't moving in. You can use the money you got from selling the winter house in your apartment to buy any house you want. I already spent the money I got from selling the winter house. I also have plans for the money I get from selling the apartment. What did you use the money for? None of your business. So when are you going to give us the manor? I'm never giving you the manor. You hear me? Why are you being so difficult? Just do the right thing. Sign the house over to us, and everyone will be happy. You are being so unreasonable. Besides, why are you the one telling me this? If my brother has a problem with how our inheritance was shared, he should confront me himself. Are you sure he also has the same thoughts? Certainly. Troy has been wanting to discuss this matter for quite some time, but he's too reserved and proud to approach you about the manner. You are the elder brother. You need to be responsible and do right by your nephews. Your father failed his grandkids by not giving us the manor. You have a chance to make things right. My father has done way more than enough for your kids. Saying that he failed them is mean and dishonest. But it doesn't matter. The manor is mine, and it will remain mine. It will stay in the family and be passed down from one generation to the next. Fine. It's clear you don't want to be reasonable. You are too selfish to do the right thing. But it's okay. If you won't give us the house, when we can move in, we can be roommates. What do you mean roommates? There are many empty rooms in the house, Eric. You can move into one of the rooms and leave the rest of the house to us. Oh, you should stay in the basement. I have to live in the master bedroom. That's the only way it can work. Especially since you know how your brother now works at the overseas branch of his company. He's in England most of the time. But when he comes home, we will need the big bedroom to ourselves. It only makes sense that I stay in the masters. Eventually, you will do the right thing and give us the manor. You must be kidding. No, I'm going to live in the manor. Makes a lot of sense. You being there can even be an advantage. 
I'm basically a single parent. But with you in the house, things would be easier. You can help me with a few chores, but I would need you to live in the basement. I don't want my kids to think you are their dad. I'm not your servant. I don't want to become roommates with you. I have no reason to help you with house chores and parenting. I have no reason to want you in my house at all. What you want doesn't matter. We need to live in the manor and that's what is going to happen. Summer is almost over, so we will start packing immediately. That way, my kids can resume school from the manor. Hey, Troy. What's going on, bro? Your wife just texted me out of the blue. She said you want the manor and asked me to give it to her. Can you believe that? I kind of deserve it, don't I? What? You don't need all that room. I have three kids and a wife. You must be joking, right? No, I'm not. We do need the house. Besides, the truth is dad wanted to give the house to us before he died. He just never got the time to speak to his lawyer. Why would dad want to give you the manor? Because I asked. He was being difficult at first, but I made him see reason. You pestered and pressured him until he told you what you wanted to hear. He would have updated his will, but he always forgot to call the lawyer and make the changes. I wanted to contest the will right after it was read, but I decided not to. I didn't want to cause a scene. Dad passed away three years ago. Don't bring him in. Why are you making a fuss right now? Saren needs a bigger house for the kids, you know? Besides, we thought you were going to do the right thing without pressure from us. But you are clearly not that kind of smart. Is that what you think? Fine. Believe whatever you want. But I refuse to let your wife and kids move into my house. So please make sure you let them know what I just said. You really should consider. You don't need all that space. It's my house, Troy. I didn't tell you what to do with your inheritance. You don't get to tell me what I do with mine. The fact that you pressured our dad to give you the other houses before he died doesn't matter. His will was clear. You get the winter house and the apartment. I get the manor. Deep down, you know he was fair. You're right. To be honest, he was fair. Just that Sarah really needs the manor. She'd been asking for it before dad died. She wanted dad to go to a home for senior citizens so she could move into the manor. But dad refused. What? She really tried to kick our father out of his house, and you supported her. What's going on, Troy? What's wrong with you? Nothing is wrong with me. <sighs> I don't know. I'm just trying to make my family happy. You will understand if you ever loved a woman deeply. I loved a woman once. She tried to manipulate me into doing things I didn't want to do. I had to break things off with her. I'm not asking you to divorce your wife, but you are responsible for your actions and decisions. You ain't the kind of person to ask your father to get out of his own house. At least, I don't think you are. You were right. Asking dad to leave the manor wasn't cool. It was also wrong of me to ask you to give me the manor. It's yours by right. Even without the will, the manor was meant to go to you. I will talk to my wife. I'm sorry for what me and my wife said. It's cool, bro. I understand that you were under pressure and not thinking straight, but don't let this happen ever again. Hey, Eric. Funny story. I forgot the address to the manor. I need you to send it to me right away. Huh? What do you need my address for? To move in, duh. I'm finally done with packing up everything. Took a while to get everything together. I already called the movers and they're on their way. Fortunately, I don't know your address. It just hit me now. <laughs> Silly me. <laughs> Is this some kind of a joke? No, come on. Send the address and stop fooling around. I used to go there all the time while your dad lived there. I always had to go there to talk some sense into him when he wasn't ready to send us some serious money. But it's been a while since I have been there. That kind of shows that you are a horrible brother-in-law because you don't send me anything. That's why I don't go to the manor anymore. Because you are kind of useless to us. You are a real piece of work. You know that? 
don't insult me because I forgot the manor's address. I can simply ask my husband, you know, or find out the address online or something. I'm pretty smart. I have a different thought. I'm not sure if you're experiencing cognitive issues or if you're just not very bright. So I will make myself very clear. I never agreed to let you live here and I never will. You got that? But you have to. Don't you understand my texts? I have already called the movers. I'm trying to be polite when asking for permission. So send the address and stop this childish game. Why is the word no so difficult for you to understand? You can't say no because you don't have a choice. There is nothing that can stop us from getting into that manor. You can't leave us out on the streets in front of the manor. You can't be that wicked and foolish, right? Are you out of your mind? Anyways, I'm looking forward to being roommates with you. I'll see you at our new place after everything's all wrapped up here. Stop this nonsense. Didn't I say I never agreed with you? I'm getting tired of saying the same thing over and over again. I told you more than once that I don't want you or your children in my house. I'm also tired of saying the same thing. We need the house, so just leave. Stop being stubborn. You're pushing me to the wall, Sarah. Don't make me do something I will regret. If you try to get on my property illegally, I will have you arrested for trespassing. I want you to think about your kids. Do you want them to watch their mother getting arrested? Come on! Don't be so mean! Where are the kids and I going to live if you refuse to accommodate us? I already sold the apartment. Do you want to see us live on the streets? Excuse me, you sold the apartment already? Yeah, I told you I was going to sell the apartment. Don't act shocked. I told you my plan. Sell the apartment and move in with you. You're the one who is being stubborn. I told you and your husband that I don't want you here. Your husband promised to speak to you. Didn't he do that? I just didn't tell him that I am going on with my plan. Wait, you didn't inform your husband that you've already sold his apartment. So what? That apartment is jointly owned by both him and me. I can do whatever I want. Besides, what he doesn't know can hurt him. It's going to hurt him for sure. Seeing his kids stranded and homeless is sure to hurt him. But it probably won't come to that. You have enough money from selling the apartment to rent a place. What I do with my money is none of your business. Besides, the money's gone. I use it to pay off a loan. What loan? Again, none of your business. Send the address already. And when we get there, you better open up. Are you crazy? I'm not giving you the address to my house. Stop asking. Fine. Have it your way. I'll get the address by other means and find my way there. Please have dinner ready by the time I get there. Me and the kids would be very hungry. Well, that would be difficult as I am not at the manor right now. Well, then get there. Must I tell you every detail of what you need to do? Use some initiative. I'm out of town. Fine. We will buy fast food. Did you leave the key under the mat or something? And when would you be back? We would need your help to unpack. Arguing with you is pointless. The manor is wide open. You can walk right in. I don't think you'd be able to live there though. Leaving a valuable house like that wide open is very irresponsible. You really should do better. That's why you should give the manor to us. We would take better care of the house than you can. And what do you mean by we won't be able to live there? Don't tell me you were trying to stop us again. The house is currently undergoing extensive renovation. I'm dedicated to preserving the facade and the original character of the building. Furthermore, I'm repairing, replacing, and repainting any part of the house that requires attention. This project has involved tearing down some walls and the addition of a backside pool. The entire compound is also contracted for landscaping improvements. Moreover, the roof has been completely removed. I anticipate that after three years of continuous work, we should be able to complete this ambitious project. What? Three years? Why don't you ask for my permission before starting the renovation? Are you listening to what you're saying? Because it's my house, and what I do with it is none of your business. You can go there, but make sure to bring your camp tent. <laughs> is this funny to you? Absolutely hilarious. I have a wide grin on my face right now. I will tell my husband about this. Do it. 
I will also tell him about the fun. Wait, what? Who is Alexander? What? I don't know. Alexander Reynolds rings a bell. No. What are you talking about? Okay, cool. I would just send this report to your husband. What report? The report my private investigator sent to me. He sent it to me a few minutes ago, just as I was texting you. He did a thorough investigation. He even had pictures and account details. What investigation? What reports? What the hell are you talking about? I told my private investigator to do an investigation on you. After talking to my brother, I got the sense that you were quite manipulative. Decided to look into you a bit further. Should have done that a while ago. Please tell me you haven't sent the report to my husband. It would end our marriage. So you do know who Alexander is? I thought as much, seeing as my private investigator sent pictures of both of you kissing before entering a hotel room together. You've also been sending a lot of money to him, most of which came from my brother. That's why you sold the apartment, right? You wanted to send more money to your lover, right? So you know the truth. Please, don't tell your brother. It will hurt him. Think about the kids for once. Be a good uncle to them. And I am thinking about the kids. That's why I'm gonna tell my brother to do a DNA test and make sure they're his. Why wouldn't they be his? He is my husband. My report says that you and Alexander have been going out long before you met my brother. It also seems like my brother isn't your first husband, but your fifth. I know your game, Sarah. You and Alexander are partners, and you two have been doing this for a long time. You move from one target to another, draining their resources and divorcing them. That's why you wanted the manor. So you can sell it and send the money to Alexander. I've told my brother everything. You're busted. My husband won't believe you. He loves me so much. We will see about that. There are pictures, remember? You are an evil person, you bastard! Screw you, Eric! There's no point in cursing at me. Goodbye, Zara. Wait! Have you sent the report to Troy? We can still work something out. Please tell me you haven't sent it to him. What are you trying to do? You can't stop me. I can give you part of the money I've gotten from him. And I can let you sleep with me. I know you stare at me when you think I'm not looking. Please. I really need Troy in my life. Stop it. That's enough. I can't believe how low you will go. I also can't believe how low you think of me. Your game is over, Sarah. When Troy received the report, he was devastated. I was there to support him and tried my best to provide comfort. I stood by his side for days, and finally, he regained his composure. He insisted on a DNA test which revealed that none of Sarah's children were his. Subsequently, he initiated divorce proceedings. I sincerely hope he finds genuine love in the future. As for Sarah, I hired a private investigator to keep an eye on her for a few months after the divorce. I did this to ensure she wasn't planning any harm against me or my brother. The investigator reported back that Sarah had relocated to a small apartment downtown. She was no longer able to attract anyone with her looks and Alexander, her partner in deceit, had abandoned her, leaving her and her children with nothing. Over time, the state had to intervene and take custody of her children since she proved unfit to care for them. After scamming multiple men, including my brother, she was now a drug addict who worked day and night to feed her body and addiction.